You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Kaya Crimson from the band Anarchion from Vancouver, BC. Their upcoming EP, Scary Tale, is coming out later this year. And she's also the founder of the Metal Metalocalyptic Music Festival, which is a BC-based metal music festival that showcases women in metal. Kaya, I'm very glad to be able to talk to you. Thank you for taking the time and welcome to The Pit. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Of course, of course. How I usually like to begin is with people's origin stories, because I imagine everyone is a superhero, and Hollywood has taught us anything over the last 20 years is that every superhero has an origin story. So <laughs> take me back, if you will. How do you remember the young Kaya falling in love with music? Uh, I would say, well, I mean, my very, very oldest memory would be, like, Nazareth, My White Bicycle. I would play that song over and over and over again. And no way. yeah, I still love it to this day. I'm staring at the record right now. Um, but yeah, so I would, I just love that. And I, I only really ever had two CDs, or because it wasn't even CDs, geez, it was cassettes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we never really had that much music or anything around the house. My parents weren't really. They like music, but they just weren't really big into it. Um, so kind of all my influences and way I found out about music was through the radio. I probably gave myself insomnia because I would listen to the radio every night and I'd be too excited for, you know, the next song to come up. So I just wouldn't sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I just, I write it. I start to started to write probably like in grade six, like just some little one-off songs like acapella songs and then I finally picked up a ukulele in grade seven because we had to and after that I was like what the frick is this I'm I'm, I'm picking up a guitar like <laughs> you know uh, but I did I did move away for grade eight and it's probably a good thing because I met a lot of music people that you know listen to a bunch of things and I just remember being so blown away by metal. Like my uncle and stuff showed me Van Halen, Metallica and all that. And I was like, cool, uh, maybe I'm a metalhead. I'm just going to go, you know, randomly pick um, a CD off the shelf in CD plus. And the first one I grabbed was Black Dahlia Murder. Oh, and no yeah, I put that on and I was like, holy shit. Like, I can't like I can still feel the feeling now of just being like like home you know where you're just like whoa like nothing has ever hit me so hard and that was pretty much how I really just dove into it I just I I just loved it right away so at some point in your early life, you moved and you kind of had to, you know, meet new friends and everything like that. And so that's where you had a group of friends that really introduced you to a lot of new music. Yeah, it was sort of like collectively, like we'd be like, we'd all show each other new stuff. And at first, a lot of my friends, they were like, what the fuck, Kaya? What are you listening to? It was just, it was too, it was too much of a jump for everyone and there it's just like it was weird everyone's like that's insane and then they started to come around i'm like yeah that's what i thought <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't always just been into metal you've also done a little bit of alt rock and like singer songwriter type things uh so at some point you decided you would like to try doing dirty vocals being in a metal project what was that like i think it was more like I was too scared and I've, I've always just been a writer and I, I love music. I mostly listen to metal and rap, I guess. I've never actually listened to much alternative rock, like very few bands. I, I accidentally got into my old band because um, I was just, you know, trying to get over my fears of like performing in front of people and then they wanted me in the band and I was like, ah! <laughs> uh, but right right yeah, you just auditioned like, you just auditioned to kind of put yourself out there you never thought you were actually going to join the band right yeah yeah I was just like okay I gotta do this if I ever want to sing in front of people I'm just gonna 
do it. <laughs> so do you remember the first time you performed live, like singing metal, what, what that felt like? Oh my God, that was like my second crazy feeling moment other than listening to Black Jolly and Murder for the first time. I, I was actually with a different band um, and we just happened to perform before my band Anarchion did. I was in a band called American Space Monkey and we did we did an album and an EP. Um, but yeah, so we performed. I jumped up on stage. Everyone started moshing. It was just insane. And it was a really small room and intimate. So it was just like crazy. I, I was high off that for days and days. <laughs> you uh, you got addicted. <laughs> yes, yes. I was like, yes, mosh, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so... Now we got to get to Anarchy on. How do you remember the band forming? Oh, I met Mr. Sylvain actually off Craigslist. And we just, you know, met at a pub and just to see, you know, how we get along and whatever. And I remember actually it was pretty funny. My I chose this pub specifically because my cousin worked there. And I'm like, okay, I don't know this guy. I need to sit at your bar so you can save me if I need to be saved. <laughs> <laughs> and then she just like kept coming over to me and I'm like, no, go away. <laughs> Cause we just, we hit it off right away. We seriously didn't, I never heard anything he's done. He's never heard anything I have done. He just like, we just mesh so well that we're like, we're going to work together no matter what. Let's do this. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And he's still in the band to this day. And so oh, are yeah. you. You guys are like founders of this band. But a lot has changed. And uh, it, we're going to yeah. get into it all. Uh, but I want to kind of get into the writing process in the earlier days. Uh, what was that like? Because it seems like now you guys are always showing uh, videos of yourselves in the jam space, like up on Instagram and stuff. So was it always this kind of thing of like writing in the room together? Um, We do sometimes. Yeah, like... A lot of the times it's just easier to come up with stuff on the spot and then I'll just kind of refine it. But a lot of the times, like Sylvain's mind is crazy. He just can come up with so much stuff. Like even an example, we um, were camping and we're like, hey, we're going for a hike. He's like, oh, I can't. I'm writing a song in my head. <laughs> we didn't have any <laughs> instruments. I'm like, OK, <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Um, wow. But yeah, like we, it's usually in the earlier days, like our very, very first song, which is actually really dear to us, we're revamping, which is Scary Tale, the original Scary Tale. And that song is our very first song that, and it was just me and Sylvain. And then, you know, we had kind of guitarists trying out and stuff. And I don't, we just never really found the right fit. And, a lot of times when you add a member in, it's like, can make or break you. Like it can ruin the band, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, now we have just a really solid lineup and we just kind of came to that point where we're like, Hey, this is it. Like it's me and Sylvain. We're the founding members. We're the main members. We want to keep the writing kind of that way so that, you know, we're not, if something ever were to happen, it's like, we, that's our songs. Those are our songs we wrote. And Anarchion really is like his and my sound together. So we're, we're keeping it that. And um, obviously, we let our guitar players do pretty much what they want. But it's a lot of the times it just starts with Sylvain. Right. And so the music has evolved a bit. I mean, from the early days, I, it seemed like with the demos, it was very like in the pocket of what I felt like was melodic death metal. But mm -hmm. then you guys quickly started branching out and just trying, like, experimenting with new things. So how do you think of the, like when you think of the early days of your music and to what it is now, how do you think it has evolved? To be honest, like other than individually, I can never like depict our stuff. I don't know what it is. It's just, like, I can't, hear it it just is what it is so i mean i know that people have said we were kind of death metally and whatever but i i couldn't even tell you what we are now 
I'm just not sure. <laughs> it's just so weird trying to not being focused on that is probably the part of the yeah you know part of the ingredients. Yeah, <laughs> we've never ever tried to be a certain genre. We just write and you know we keep what we love and just kind of do it that way. I mean. I love death metal and death core, so it's kind of funny, but Sylvain, he's not, he doesn't really listen to that much death core and death metal and stuff. So we all have really different tastes. I would say like me, the drummer, Mac, um, and the guitarist, Mike, we all have kind of similar tastes, but still all very different. With your uh, new single coming out now, it seems like everybody's kind of noticing, okay, this crazy bass line. It seems like maybe they're going into this new direction that's getting more bassy. But I kind of disagree. When I listen back to all your guys' stuff, the bass has always had a huge part in your sound, in my opinion. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah, it always has. Because Sylvain's just, that's just how he plays. He's a lead bassist, you know? And yeah. He, he's always been that way. It's just, I guess now we're more just basing everything off what he writes first. And you've experimented a lot with your voice uh, over the years. You, you seem to be one of those vocalists who likes to try to find different tones and things. Like when you when you went from uh, into, sorry, stratosphere, when you were trying different uh, clean vocals, you weren't just trying, you know, nice clean vocals you're also trying like dirty weird like a mixture between clean and dirty and even some parts where you're going straight from a really nice clean to a really harsh dirty right beside it which is really hard to do <laughs> like to jump from one tone to the other so what can we expect from your voice on this new ep is there anything new that you're trying um i'd say it kind of falls in line of like sort of what i do a lot and the Scary Tale EP is based off of our original Scary Tale. So there's a bit of elements of clear vocals as well. But yeah, I mean, I guess I just try to sound like a little sweet gremlin girl <laughs> <laughs> if I'm doing vocals. Because I honestly, like, I cringe at clear vocals of my own and I'm just like, ugh. I, I can't help what the song calls for, so I just have to do it. You know, you're like, well, this is what it calls for. This is what I hear in my head. I got to do it. Get over yourself. It's one of those ingredients that you've learned. It seems like you you mix it well. It's all in balance. <laughs> Thank you. I, yeah, it's good to hear. Because I, I don't really ever want to be the band where it goes like clear verse, dirty chorus, or, you know, dirty chorus, um, clear verse kind of thing. It's just... You know, if there's a part, then I'll do it. And yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, like I said, it's hard to depict what I really do. We just, I just try to write what fits to the song and just stay true to myself, I guess. Maybe if I can ask you a little bit more about this single, specifically Bloody Mary. Uh, because mm -hmm. a part of the aesthetic behind Anarchion for a long time has been blood, but uh, <laughs> so is is Bloody Mary about vampirism or not really? I mean, I I guess I tell people different things, but it is <laughs> it it is, but it's like you can also depict it um, in not such a direct meaning, you know, like you can kind of, I don't know, like you can kind of take it like a power thing and maybe not like that, or maybe like someone who just like, you know, needs, needs more power and feels weak. But I mean, it's an easy way for me to write is vampirism and I actually, most of our songs are very real based and kind of emo. I think we only have four, four blood songs. <laughs> I was thinking of the, the music video you, you guys did for that. It had like a blood sacrifice ritual or something going on. In oh there. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that song wasn't even really about 
vampires. Well, it was sort of, but it's like, it's funny. I just, <laughs> we, me and Sylvain and Mac are all kind of little vamps. So it just always goes in that direction. Can we expect to hear any, uh, uh, are you guys going to put out any other singles before the EP comes out? Uh, nope. We're going to put out the EP and then release our other single after our EP. Okay. So we do have another single, but it's going to be after our EP. We're just going to kind of stick with um, our vamp theme for this half of the year and then release more stuff. And uh, before we move on from Anarchion, I, I just had, is there anything in your mind that might be maybe a misconception that people might have about you or Anarchion? Um, I'm not sure. I don't really know what that many people think. All I know is I'm a super fan of my band members. <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, there's always... There's always that thing where, you know, I'm a female, so I'm under a magnifying glass all the time. Because... Right, because you were voted to be the spokesperson at the last meeting, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it's it, it gets a little bit annoying, and I feel that I am fair uh, unfairly judged a lot of the times. Like, you know, there's always trolls, right? There's always people like, oh, can she even, like, does she even know timing? Has she ever like recorded to a click? It's like, okay. And now I'm like looking at myself and I'm like, well, was I out of time? And then I'm listening. I'm like, no, I'm not fucking out of time. It's just a weird time and you can't understand it. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's, it is a lot of pressure. And I feel that a lot of the times um, just women in general have to prove themselves more. Like, I feel that if it was a crappy vocalist and he was male up there, that there wouldn't be much said, you know? Right. But if it was a female, it's just like, oh, yeah, that was crap. That was shit. You know, it's like, I don't know. But honestly, for the most part, people in the community are so nice. And, you know, they're really encouraging. And there's so many girls in the scene. That they're all amazing. So maybe this is a natural place to segue to the festival. Yes. I mean, starting your own music festival, holy shit. How do you, I don't understand. Because <laughs> I think of like how many different moving pieces there would be to figure out, to, to organize that whole thing. Did When you first got the idea of starting the Metalocalyptic Festival, was it, did you have the idea and start going after it right away? Or did you have the idea and have to kind of like think about it for a while before you started putting plans into motion? Uh, I have the sickness where <laughs> I completely pile everything on top of myself to a point where people are like, how do you, how do you even have time? How do you do that stuff? But yeah, it, it literally came into my head. And I was obsessed. I did not stop. I barely slept for like half a year and just researched everything because I didn't know shit all. But you know, like, yeah, sure, I've put on a show or two and whatever, but I just studied everything and just kind of looked up everything and just didn't get off the internet pretty much. I <laughs> searched like the entire world for every female band there was and started talking to them and it yeah it just kind of spiraled from there and spiraled upward obviously but it was just it, it was pretty crazy and you know it it blossomed into something really good and you know people really love the idea and it's just it's an awesome time it's worth it <laughs> when when you uh, went through the first year, uh, w was there any unexpected hurdles? I would say, I guess I just, ex I over planned, I overspent, I overdid everything to a T, like just every single little thing I thought about. And <laughs> I never did that again. 
because it was just too much, too much. And I just, I didn't need to do all that. Um, so it, the, I think the most hurdle for me was financially because I, I have put my life savings into this and my band and, you know, it's like any business you have to dump money into it and then you can finally like start making some and getting the festival bigger and better, you know? And so how do you remember the turnout and the, how the, the festival went down in the first year? What are your memories from that? The festival really had a small turnout, but even though it did, there was some really cool things. Like there was this couple from Germany who flew here just for the festival. Wow. And I was like, are you serious? Like, how would you even find out about this festival? Like, it was <laughs> bizarre. And they just, they had so much fun. And it was so cool. I was just like, I was blown away. And then there was this another guy from Germany, too. He just happened to be in BC and asked me if he can volunteer. And he just, like, walked up to the festival. I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. But... Yeah, the turnout was small, but all the bands were there, and it was it was pretty cool. So, obviously, last year it didn't happen, and going into the summer, I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen already. Armstrong Metal Fest, uh, they said that they've already canceled, obviously. But do you have, plan- have plans for 2022? Or is it something that you're not really thinking about right now, focused on Archeon? Um, I think that we're all just kind of sitting and waiting yeah and it gets to a certain point where like you need at least nine months like at the very least nine months to start planning everything and for it to go smooth so if you know by nine months time before the fest and you know covid and all that isn't um going to work with it it's like there's just no point because yeah you might be able to have like everyone six feet apart with masks on it's like but what kind of experience would that be if no one can really hang out or mosh or you know it's just it would be super weird and i think that most of the festivals feel the same way but yeah i think it's just everyone's just kind of just chilling until we know more well, that's, that's pretty much all we can do. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a question I always ask people, and it's it's kind of cheesy, but I still like to ask it, and it's just become a staple question I always ask. What advice would you give to anyone who's just pursuing their dreams? Don't stop. Be consistent. It's literally mathematical. Like, it's it's all science-based. You just, it's, you just keep going. Be consistent. Just keep putting stuff out, just keep getting better and don't let up. And, you know, probability says you will make it. You can be a crap musician and make it, but if you're a talented musician and you're consistent, you're going to go so far. Well said. Very well said. That's all I have to say. (laughs) Succinct and well said. I liked it. (laughs) Is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners? Um, yeah, just keep tuning in to Anarchion. We have lots of exciting news and music that we'll be putting out. And we are filming our big production music video next month. So it's really exciting. And what's the easiest way for people to find you guys online? I, I would say that Instagram is probably something that's updated the most. And you can go to at Anarchion Band. And you can find us under Anarchion on YouTube and on Facebook under Anarchion. A-N-A-R-C-H-E-O-N. Kaya, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. Everyone, you've been listening to Kaya Crimson from the band Anarchion from Vancouver, BC. Their new single, Bloody Mary, is out now in anticipation for their upcoming EP, 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 Scary Tale. Kaya, thanks for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Yes, looking forward to it. Take care of yourself. 
Me too.